there are more and more people as we move through the pontificate of Francis, more and more people are just saying, look, I'm not a theologian. I don't know Latin. I don't know ministerium, munis. I don't know. One thing I do know is I'm a Catholic and I can't get on board with Francis. People are saying that. And so it's, you know, it's kind of like people say, well, Trump's not my president. People are saying, well, Francis isn't my pope. Benedict's my pope. And I don't know all the theology and, and the canon law and all that. But look, that's just how I got to live right now, because I can't get on with Pope Francis saying God wills a plurality and diversity of religions, that you could perhaps be in a state of mortal sin and be conscious of it and still receive confession and communion. Uh, and, and these kind of things that, that you know, idol, pacha idols in a church, people just, you know, you don't have to be a theologian to read the Summa. You could be the most pious grandma in New Jersey watching this stuff and say, no, nah, this, I can't go with this. I can't go with this. So do you think part of the plan moving forward, because I, because this is the thesis that you seem to hold. I don't know if you hold it a hundred percent, but you seem to hold it. We're talking about this in public. Could it be over a year, two more years, three more years, more and more Catholics are saying, look, I'm just down B16. It's, it's quite possible. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I don't want to lead anybody into schism. And I wouldn't want to do anything to separate myself from the vicar of Christ. Amen. But it just it just seems to me that this is what's happening. So we do need to flood heaven with prayers for the conversion of Papa Francesco. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus oh, yeah. shed his precious blood that everybody go to heaven, uh, including Francesco and exactly. Mara Diaga and the whole the whole gang. <laughs> um, but I think we got to call it like we see it and and try to follow the truth as best we know it. And I wouldn't even be thinking like this if Pope Benedict wasn't dressing in white, right. issuing apostolic blessings, mm -hmm. uh, and the whole the whole nine yards. So okay, so let's just wrap up here. You know, I, I think it's important um, for people to understand that your thesis is a little bit different. Uh, it's one that I haven't heard yet. Uh, it's that Benedict himself planned this. It's not that he's in substantial error. You're saying he's not substantial, or he's in substantial truth, and that what he did is he appealed back to a theological debate that's been going on since Vatican I, not Vatican II, but Vatican I. You're saying that the, the Romanitas, the Episcopate of Rome, going back to Vatican I, you're saying that Benedict is not in substantial error, he's in substantial truth, and that he is stripping off the Romanitas from the supremacy, the charism, and the munis office of the papacy. Is that correct? It's the yes, that's yeah. the only solution that would that would make sense of his public statements where he still claims to have the spiritual mandate, and yet he recognizes Francis as his successor. Yeah. It's the only way to reconcile what you know George Weigel and Dr. Di Mattei and others have said that you can't you can't divide the munis. And neither can you have two bishops of the same diocese at the same time, let alone the bishop, the Episcopacy of Rome. Right. In fact, I'll tell you something I learned. I didn't know this either. There was a pope in the early modern period who actually condemned as heretical the proposition that you can have two popes at the same time. Mm. Um, somebody had, had tried to argue, the Jansenists, some Jansenists had tried to argue that Peter and Paul were both papas at the same time of okay. Rome. Okay. Yeah, because the Pope calls himself a successor of Peter and Paul, so that's probably what yeah. they're trying to do. Exactly, and that proposition has actually been condemned. So, um, yeah, no, you're right. So my thesis is that he's in substantial truth, mm -hmm. and if that thesis is wrong, well, then my backup thesis is that he's in substantial error. Okay. But either way, he's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's okay. still Pope. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we've got the substantial truth argument, and we've got the substantial error argument, and then we've got the. Marshall managed. We're in a world of pain. I don't. I don't really know it's going to work <laughs> out. But I think we all agree uh, that we're brothers and sisters in Christ, Amen. Um, and that we're all trying to seek the truth. We hold the same faith, and Amen. trying to figure out what's going on in 2020 is a matter of analyzing history, from which we have um, no way to look back on. I mean, I'm sure people, if, if this isn't the end, if there's another hundred years, people will look back on this time and like, oh, it was obvious that so-and-so was the Pope and this is what was happening and all that. But from where we are in the midst of it, 
we're like Sam and Frodo somewhere, you know, in Mordor. We got a ring, but we don't know how this whole thing's going to shake out. Yeah, in fact, a good quote to end on would be from the Lord of the Rings. I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf. And so do all who live to see such times. What is that? That is not for them to decide. All we have to do is to decide what to do with the time that is given us. Amen. Amen. That's, that's, that's the ending right there. <laughs>